Baby, baby, I love me some Deion Sanders. Not only is he, well, first off, the number one cornerback of all time, maybe the greatest sports athlete in the recent uh, last century, but he makes this job a lot easier because he is putting all of the dirt from behind the scenes with the Minnesota Fighting Vikings, all the drama. Uh, he's putting it out there on Front Street. I love it, man. I love it. So Dion was on Barstool Sports Pro Football football Show or something like that. And, yeah, talking. To, uh, he was asked about his guy, Zimmer, getting fired, and this is what he said. Quote, yeah, we talked. Uh, we spoke the other day. Uh, he and their GM, Rick Spielman, hadn't spoke in months, and it was just a downward spiral. When you look back on this, look at the commonality of the guys who got fired. Look at all the guys who got fired, and then look at the quarterback play, and there's a common thread to each and every darn one of them. Wow. Wow, man. So, just the random shot of Kirk Cousins at the end, but no. Nah. Now, first off, take everything Dion says with a grain of salt because all of his information is clearly coming from Zimmer. Uh, their, their chats because uh, they talk and text more than people know. So, it is certainly one-sided, and Zim certainly does have an axe to grind against Spielman, against K probably Kirk Cousins, hence the random uh, Cousins comment in there. But uh, say this is all true, right? Uh, you can see why the Wilfs fired everyone. Because if your head coach and GM literally are not speaking, which are you know, the two most non, uh, two most important non-player uh, people in your organization, ah, that's an issue. It's a big time issue. And did it just come down to uh, a measuring contest? Did it come down to ego? Did it come down to anger? I don't know. But the Vikings, from ev just post mortem and just trying to reverse engineer what the hell happened in the last two seasons where the Vikings, on paper, on purpose, have had a top tier team, but they just imploded. They lost all these close games. They quit. Whenever they got punched in the mouth, they rolled over and they underachieved. Now you're starting to see why. Now you're, now you're starting to see why Kendricks and O'Neill are talking about how the, this fear-based uh, uh, organization, bad leadership. Hey, someone say hi to me in the hallway, man. Hey, come on. But yeah, Zimmer's hey, – now it's starting to make a little bit of sense because if Spielman and Zimmer literally were not talking for the last month – and it was weird because they were tight. I mean, Spielman was a big reason why Mike Zimmer finally got his shot to be an NFL head coach. And they were very close for the first couple of years of Zimmer's tenure. Uh, they would always uh, talk before the games. You know, the, you'd see pictures of them sitting on the bench after games, talking over things. They'd meet up, and they seemed to have a very cordial, professional working relationship. But, I mean, if all this stuff is true... You, you are starting to see the disconnect because if you're a player, if you're an assistant, if you're a junior executive with the Vikings and you're seeing that the GM and the head coach just are not on the same page, even though they're in the same building every day, they're on the same practice field every day, and they're just not speaking, you can cut that tension with a knife. And you, uh, you can see why lots of people were checked out. The players, the coaches, the junior executives are like, oh, I should probably go get my resume ready. I should probably go update my CV. Right? And Zimmer's vendetta uh, against Spielman's rookies, uh, maybe, maybe it is that they can't play. I don't think it's that, though. Because maybe Spiel, uh, Zimmer wanted all, player XYZ and then uh, Spielman gave him ABC. So that could explain why he is so hard on Kellen Mond. That could explain why he's so hard on Wyatt Davis and basically put him in witness protection. Maybe that's why Chaz Surratt never got the time of day. I mean, Bynum got the time of day. Same thing with Nguangu because they're good, right? You just can't deny that. Darisaw eventually got out there too because it's a first-round pick. But it's starting to come together. And also, we said at the time, Spielman signing of Sluter late in the season, that seemed like an F U. Because Zimmer never had the time of day for Kyle Jerome Ezekiel Sluter. And like we said, they could have signed any backup quarterback in the league. But you specifically bring that guy in just as a passive-aggressive move. Uh, because let, let's say everything Dion is saying is true. And Zimmer and Spielman hadn't been on talking terms for months, weeks, whatever. And then all of a sudden, oh, you have quarterback issues. A couple, couple of them have the Rona. And then Kyle Sluter. Bow, go, that's Kyle Sluter's music. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful Greek tragedy, man. Because I think this all comes down to Cousins, his contract, and the extension. I think the extension broke it because you understand the initial contract, the three years, 84, 84 million guaranteed. You had to do something. And Keenum, uh, could he repeat 2017? Probably not. Teddy with that knee, big question mark. And I still think that Zimmer 
a thousand percent want to roll with Teddy. Uh, he's going to love Teddy forever. He was his guy, handpicked, uh, traded up to 32 in 2014. They were supposed to grow well together and hopefully hoist a couple of drum parties, but it didn't happen because Teddy's uh, leg, you know, uh, consciously uncoupled from his body. So I think that was a breaking point. And I think that Zimmer, either consciously or subconsciously, never struck up a rapport with Cousins because he was resentful of Spielman. Because he felt that Cousins' contract hurt his team, especially his defense, uh, because they were hamstrung by Kirk Cousins' salary cap number. So, again, just reverse engineering all of this. Man. Man, I love me some Dion Because Dion, uh, Dion might be a little bit out of line here. Because, uh, like we said, this is obviously from private conversations with Zimmer. Uh, unless Zimmer specifically told him to start putting this stuff out on Front Street or it's all good. Um, because... All this stuff makes Zimmer look bad, too, because this is, again, if all this is true, this is not going to help Zimmer get another head coaching job. This might even preclude him from getting a defensive coordinator job. Like if if he's a guy who can't put aside his ego, he's supposed to be the leader, and then all of a sudden he's not on speaking terms with the uh, uh, top executive in his club, come on. Come on, man. But uh, your thoughts are our thoughts. <laughs> Zimmer and Spielman apparently we're talking. I don't know. Uh, let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But until next time, Skull Production Value.